everyone. Here we are again. Uh, we awake. And thank you for being here. And uh, thank you for the community that keeps showing up to meditate together. And you guys have made it an important part of your lives. And that's why we continue doing it. And yeah, it's definitely uh, one of my important things that I do during the week, or I feel it's important for me. And um, today we're going to do uh, two tracks from uh, a real favorites of mine called Harmonic Resonance. And these are, they're kind of very droney, you know, not not a lot of different sounds and stuff, which which I really appreciate. And they're two 15-minute tracks, so it's going to be a half hour. And the first 15 minutes will be Delta, which is a very low meditative state, and then Epsilon, which is even slower and lower on the, on the scale. So we I was talking with Sabi before we got rolling here. I'm not checking in, seeing how she's doing. And uh, she says she's getting ready for a social studies uh, university course she's taking to take the exam. And that was pretty painful, you know. I mean, so many issues, right? War and poverty and addiction. And, uh, you know, I could go on and on. Don't even, you know, mention the environmental things that are happening. And, and uh, you know, as we progress technologically, I forget who said it, but we, you know, we have the technology of the gods and the morality of monkeys. And that's putting monkeys down. You know, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't got to, um, you know, to the level where we can do this. Uh, and so she was saying it's really painful and I agree it is painful. So the question is, the spiritual question comes to be, what do you do with that? And, uh, well, there's, there's a bunch of things you can do about it. You can just get overwhelmed and kind of become a radical you know, and just ah, and protest and fight it, and and uh, you know, hit the streets, or you know, become part of a revolutionary movement with, you know, the idea that you could do a better job if you were in charge. You know, it's like, I mean, and, that, and that's very appealing because sometimes you think it wouldn't be too hard to do a better job, you know, because some of this stuff is really stupid. Uh, but oftentimes in revolutions turn on themselves and eat up, end up eating their leaders. And, and uh, anyway, hard to deal with power. You know, it, it seems to uh, twist the human soul. So, and it doesn't mean there haven't been good leaders. There have been good leaders. And uh, one of my heroes that I've been studying lately, I've uh, been studying the Civil War in the United States because that's a very key, key element uh, uh, define who we are as a nation and all our strength and our weaknesses and you know, our sins and everything were all brought together. But Abraham Lincoln was the, was the president of, of the, the union, the part that was trying to keep the country together. And he was really brilliant. But you can see um, throughout his presidency and before, but especially during the, when he was president, that he really grew as a soul and a human being. You know, he started seeing, well, this is for this thing, that it, this, oh, oh, okay, okay, it became very clear. And he, 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 uh, he grew into to the position. And one of the great disasters of American history, not only for the northern part, but for the south, was that he was assassinated like the day after they signed, the, the, they surrendered at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. And he, you know, he... Uh, he wanted to heal the country, you know, and he wanted to try to deal um, with with the the newly freed slaves, and you know, and, uh, he would have been it would have been a much better thing, but he didn't. He, he was killed, and uh, so I don't know how I got on that one, but but the the point is that we can we can grow over time, and sometimes the stressors and the pain, um, if we we let it work on us, can can transform us and can can make us deeper most more soulful more honest more more humble more um, dedicated to doing what we need to do and after a while just you know just doing what you you know 
whatever it doesn't is no longer satisfying so you have to kind of find what you're there to do and it could be a big thing it could be a little thing it doesn't really matter because it's all one thing so if in your little you know our little piece of it the little uh, tiny particle of consciousness that is a hologram to the whole universe we contain everything um is it's important to get right you know the parts you're supposed to play and you might have you know a leading part you know we're up in front and leading and talking and doing this stuff you maybe have a very minor part you know which just means uh staying at home you know and raising the next generation of, of young people or whatever it might be um but it's important that we kind of find that especially when we get to the point where these questions matter to us and if they don't matter yet, don't worry about it. You know, eventually it will. You know, eventually it will. Uh, this life, next life, or something. But at some at some point, we open up in these things. The bigger questions, the bigger issues that Sabi has been studying in uh, the university um, become important to us. And I got some real doozies, you know, that are going on in my country that I haven't figured out yet. You know, it's like I can't even have a an argument at a cocktail party about, you know, what I think could happen to you because I don't know what to do. I kind of have some ideas, but it's painful, you know? And uh, so anyway, all that to say, these are two really, really good tracks. And uh, if you do are experiencing some kind of pain and despair about where we are evolutionary wise as a species, where your country is, where your neighborhood is, where your family is, um, just hold that in your heart and just ask for help and uh, and ask for guidance. And uh, and I want to do the right thing. I want to do my part, but I really need, I need, uh, I need you to be with me. Great spirit. Okay. So let's do this thing. And uh, you, let me get mine up here. Get your headphones in, sit up straight. You are nobility, so sit like it. You know, any any ch child of the universe or child of God is is a noble, amazing miracle. So live like it, sit like it.
Well, there we go. Um, harmonic resonance. Beautiful love. Beautiful, powerful tracks. And there, there's actually two other ones. There's an alpha and the theta. And we did the last, the last two, um, if you're interested. Now, anyway, um, I was experiencing me earlier. I was meditating earlier. I meditate to prepare myself to meditate. <laughs> that's kind of redundant, but that's me. Um, yeah, I was struggling with with things that Sabi was talking about, you know, the big world problems. And, uh, you know, I've been very moved and aggrieved and sad and hurt and angry at um, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, you know. It's real to me. The real people. I don't know what the hell Putin's going on with. I mean, they they don't have the population. The birth of children has gone down in Russia a lot. And now he's sending his young men into this meat grinder. You know, probably well over 200,000 Russian soldiers have been killed by him. If you sit in the Vietnam War, U.S., 10 years we were there, however long it was, like 58,000 dead. So this is one year and, and change. Um, you know, and, and can you blame the young Russian men and soldiers? And, you, know, you grow up in a dictatorial, you know, authoritarian government where all you watch is Fox News. It's all you have. There's no, there's no other... Uh, they try to control the internet too. There's no other thing to get the party line, the party line, the party line. And it uh, gets to you, you know, you, you start, you just buy it. Because not to buy it, first of all, puts you in danger. And uh, it's just this huge cognitive dissonance. It's like, holy, wow, it's huge. So uh, I've been struggling with that. By the way, I wrote a, I wrote a song um, called Ukraine. Exclamation mark. And it's on YouTube. Check it out. Just put John Fui, you can come right on. And, um, and there's a beautiful, beautiful video that a young Ukrainian woman put together to illustrate the song. And it works incredibly powerful together. So um, you can watch that. YouTube, you can John Fui, and uh, share it. I think it's important. But I've also, I've been in the studio writing another, uh, recording another song, recording quite a few songs, but um, all of the stuff from when I wrote this Ukrainian song that people think is very, very powerful. And I hadn't written barely anything in many years. I used to be quite active songwriter, and yeah, singer and whatnot. I just hadn't done that. And uh, I did that. And it just opened a channel of of creativity for me and about the things. And, you know, how do you, how do you write a song? I don't know. I've done a bunch of them. I just don't point. It's, it's just, it starts to, you pay attention and it starts to come through. Um, and, and how do you write, especially a protest song that this doesn't sound really hokey and carny. <laughs> it's not easy. That's probably why we have so few of it. Um, in the last, you know, 30 or 40 years in the United States. So anyway, I'm I'm uh, writing this, uh, recording this other song. It's called uh, "Look at This Picture: A Song to Putin," and I'm singing it as if I am singing it to Putin, singing it to his soul. And the last two verses say this, and I think uh, it's. An evolutionary clue is what we have to head for, what we have to achieve as human beings if we're going to make it. And I'm I'm writing to him as if he's a Christian because he professes to be about Christian, Russian Orthodox. So let's see if I can remember the verses. It says, go into a church and clear your head. 
talk to the man who's hanging dead. Ask him what he thinks you should do. He says, love your neighbors the way I love you. Look at this picture. Look at this picture. What do you see? In the last verse. There's only one way, Vladimir, this can end. I might say only one way, humanity, this can end. Only one way to wash away your sins. To defeat your enemy. To defeat your enemies. You must. You must make them your friends. Look at this picture. So that's where we got to go. And uh, I'm not suggesting, you know, at, at, at this current level that the Ukrainians should say, oh, okay, just come on in, Russia, have a good time. Take our country, do whatever you want. No, I'm not saying that. But ultimately, the, the, the horror and the wastefulness of war and the destruction of all these lives and, and, and Ukraine's civilian lives, they're, they're targets, just like the soldiers are. And all these young Russians are just being fed into the meat grinder. Trying to take this little town, little city called Bakhmut. Tens of thousands of Russians have died trying to take that, just marching into fields of fire. It's insane. So, yeah, if you want security for our planet, the country next door will make them your friends. It's like Europe today, you know. Um, all the history of Europe, I've studied quite a bit of it, you know, for centuries. It's nothing but fight, fight, fight. This people against that people, this group against that group, you know, France against Germany, Germany against Russia, uh, France against Spain, uh, the English against the Dutch and the French, and on and on. It's just what they did. And now they don't. And I think there are very few French people today who are worried about being invaded by Germans. Uh, and I don't think Spain is really scared. And, uh, France is going to come galloping over the Pyrenees and try to take it over again. Why? Because they learned. After World War II, they said, enough is enough already. Do this differently. And, uh, you know, it's still got its issues. But they've come a long way, baby. You know? And it just shows you the possibility that we can do. So we have to, we have to do that within ourselves. And here's uh, this one thing that I learned, and I just want to share it because it, it, I think it shed some light on what that song is about, where the ultimate, uh, or at least, not, I don't know, but it's an ultimate. It never, never ends. It seems that the universe just keeps going and going and going. Um, but this, the question was. And then I want to ask my students this. If you are a Jew, how do you forgive the Nazi? Okay. And I'm, I'm talking if you were a Jew that experienced this, right? That your family would woken up early morning, dragged out of bed, couldn't take anything, their clothes or just in their pajamas and loaded up in trucks with dogs and guys and guys in trucks. And they put in the trains just broken. Where people died on the way so they couldn't get enough oxygen, but they were old people. And then rolled into these camps. They stripped you naked, took away all your clothes. They said, men go over here, women go over there, we're going to give you a big shower, clean you up. Put you in there. Then they turned on the gas. How do you forgive that? One table out of mirror. And this is it. 
a certain level of realization we realize we know we get we experience that we are the Jews and we are the Nazis and we've been doing this to ourselves and doesn't mean that you don't have to fight violence and dictatorships and imperialism and this country being destroyed doesn't mean that but eventually our species if we give ourselves enough time will evolve to the point that we realize that we are there's just one of us here you know and all of us are playing out different little individual parts of the same body of the same consciousness and and not as a not as a really cool intellectual concept, which we might, you know, study quantum physics and start seeing, you know, uh, scientific models that kind of explain how this all works. But as as a deep, deep, deeply felt realization, and uh, you know, invading another country, or grabbing people out of their beds and taking them to death camps would be be like I don't know, waking up and, and seeing your grandmother and you're slapping her for the hell of it. It's just, no! It's just no way in heaven and earth that I can behave in such a way. And uh, so, anyway, that that's the direction and that's the possibilities that um, we have as a seed of evolution and development in, in each one of us. And, um, you know, let's ask our bigger self for, for the strength and the courage and the experience and the, the light and the love that we need. To heal our poor, poor um, human family. And by doing so, give all the rest of our non human brothers and sisters a chance to do their thing, to live and to prosper. So, so, anyway, there it is. So, I love you guys. Thank you for, for being here. And, uh,